everyone. Join me as I talk about artist block. Now I'm talking about the really tough stuff where you walk into the studio and you could be there for an hour and you're stuck. You cannot move forward and do what you love to do. To create, to explore and play with the mediums and stuff. Um, I'll share with you a little bit about my story and some simple steps to help me get through it. Maybe that'll help for you. I hope so. Um, share with me in the comments below um, if there's another area of this topic you want to cover or maybe some questions that I haven't answered yet that can help you through. Because, I, you know, if I can help, I'll try. See ya. Okay. So what I did to recover over the artist block that I have, which was based on a tragic event, um, is first off, you need to pick a medium. Keep it simple. Um, always keep it simple. It, it makes recovery a little bit easier. Uh, for me, I chose drawing. For example, it could be drawing, it could be doodling, um, paint, uh, sculpting. If you like sculpting, uh, if you make jewelry, make you know mess around with jewelry findings and things. Uh, photography, you know, whatever calls to you creative wise. Pick something and this is just to get you started you can tweak it out you can add bits and pieces of other things this is to get the pattern going so that's that's where it the simplicity helps for you okay so mine was drawing so once a week let me start that over again once a day for a week I went into my studio with intention intention was to draw time slot 10 minutes the first week there were some days I could go in to my studio and I would literally stand there or sit there for 10 minutes and not be able to draw anything okay again critical part while going through this process and you have decided to commit to yourself do not I don't want to step on my dog here <laughs> Do not give yourself a hard time if you cannot follow through. It's okay. Your part is showing up. You need to show up for yourself. So, first week, 10 minutes a day. Show up, have a pad already ready for you. Have your favorite pen, pencils around. You see what I'm getting at? Have an area set up that's your little spot that you're gonna go create. So 10 minutes for the first week. Let's say, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I do fine. Thursday, I can't do it, but I still show up for 10 minutes, and then I leave. Maybe I don't draw anything, and that's okay. Maybe I just soft the paper for a little bit. You know what I'm getting at. You're not able to do it, and that's okay. So Friday comes around, I'm able to doodle for like, you know, five minutes. Okay, but my 10 minutes has expired, and I showed up. Week two. First question, do I need to do week one again? Am I there to move forward? Don't think too hard on it. Your instinct should be like, yes or no. So, week two comes around and you're okay with it. Let's move on. Instead of 10 minutes, we're gonna do 20. We're gonna double it. Go with the doodling. I, we'll just pick that one for now. I, drawing and doodling for me. And I was able to go through week two, I think two days of week two in my journey, I wasn't able to draw, but I still kept it up. I found by Friday, I was actually able to do 30 minutes. And what I did is I had my phone set up, I had the little timer going, the little stopwatch thing, um, but I had it facing down on the second week, and that seemed to help me out a little bit. So I'm not staring at the clock, I was like waiting for it, tick, 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 tick. And that way, if I let it keep going, and I was like, I was feeling like, no, I think my time's up, I flip over and look at it, and I found myself at 30 minutes, so I felt really good. So, third week, I was ready to continue. And so the third week, the 20 minutes doubles again. So you're at 40 minutes now. First question, do I need to do week two again? Do I need to go back to week one? You have to find out where you're at mentally, sorry, mentally, and in your heart. We don't know if you've had a hard day, only you know if you had a hard day or a hard week. So week three, if you're up for it, 
double the 20 minutes, make it 40. Okay, if at any point during this journey, you've had a hard week, something has come up, you had to focus on, say your loved one is now back in the hospital and their treatment's going wrong and you've got to focus on it completely, you come back, you maybe you missed a week or something like that, I would recommend starting back with week one, just build it up. When you put in this little time to yourself, week one, week two, and week three, it becomes, okay, your body's like, okay, I need to reset. I'm good, you know, have a couple of days of this, and it's like, okay, we're ready to keep going. So I think you're, you're getting the pattern here. It's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and soon by the end of the week on the 40 minutes, you're actually not paying attention to the time anymore. Now you're paying attention to what you need. And that's the part where it gets you going. So after week three, let's say you've done this successfully. You've gotten to the 40 minute mark. After this, it's up to you. Do you wanna continue that pattern? What do you need? Do you need to add some colors? Do you need to add some paint to the drawing? Do you need to explore more? Then that's up to you. So that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. It's just very simple. Keep patterns going. Most, most, most important thing, check in with yourself, what do you need? Do I need to start over? Or do I need to just sit here and be in my space for a little bit and enjoy the calm? What I also end up doing when I started is I'd sit down at the table, have my pad in there and my pencil there and I was ready to doodle and the first thing I did is I took a very big deep breath. It helps get Oxygen to the brain, it's a natural calming element, and it just gets you into the right mood. And then I would continue. So, good luck with this. And for those that are going through tough times, know that it's okay. That if you miss a day, a week, or something like that, this is the part where it's given back to you. But you also need to be okay with taking breaks because you have to take care of things. Maybe you have to take care of the family. You have to take care your loved ones or yourself, you're going through something. So, all right, now I gotta get, develop the courage and tell you my story. So, give me a moment, <laughs> I'll get back. Okay, now I gotta get the courage going here. All right, so a quickie sum up for me, my story. My nephew, Stephen, came to live with us when he was about 13. He, was sent to us, he had out of control behaviors. Um, he was severely damaged. So, we brought him in. I mean, what do you do with a kid? You, you, you bring them in, you nurture them, you fill them up with love, but you also do the parenting thing and give them all the therapy, the tools, structure, love, attention, talking to them, hours and hours and hours of talking, um, listening more important than, than the talking. But you're always there, you set up the environment. So we brought him in and we didn't know how long he was gonna stay with us. We told him that, we didn't know how long. So the only way we could wrap our brains around it was to say, hey, we're gonna give you all the love, attention, the tools, everything that our sons would get, you're gonna to get too. And we love and care about you anyway. So it's a win-win and whether you're here for five minutes, five months, 50 years, that's what's gonna happen. So we did that. And the journey was, was hard. And it's also hard because I had, my boys were young at that time too. And so we're trying to build up a healthy environment for all three of them. And it was tough, it was, it was, it was very hard. Um, but I love him, love him dearly. I love them all. And my sons took him in as, as kind of, I mean, it's no longer their, their cousin. It was more like their brother. I mean, he, he was great. And yeah, I'm using the phrase was, you're probably picking that up. Um, unfortunately at 18, he committed suicide. Um, you don't need to know the details of that because that's not anything that helps the story out or... It just doesn't help. But, like, again, like I said, he was severely damaged. Um, and unfortunately, 
about three to four months after that, his mother, my sister, also committed suicide. Um, so, yeah, I was stuck with having to give my family through this, too. I mean, they lost their brother. So, immediately, hours block for me. So, I've had to really work my way through this. Um, here's the important part that I really want to talk about. And that is when you're overcoming a tragedy, a really tough thing, or caregiving situation, or your own struggles or battles and stuff. If you need the support, love, care, even the structure to get through it, get through the emotions of it. Because some of this stuff is tough. It, it weighs heavy on you. Make sure you get the help you need if you need that. If you're feeling like it's, the world's getting away from you, there, there's some clues there that... You need some help. If anything, it could be a support system of the other people that have been through the same thing you have. Okay, so I found myself stuck and I sought out a creative coach. And this is the, the system we kind of came up with that helped me out. I, we have been through therapists, family therapists all throughout Stephen's adventure. So we knew what was going on. We knew the why too. We, I knew the answer of the why, you know, he did this. Does it help the, the pain? Not in the slightest, to be honest with you. Um, so we knew all those answers. We knew all the questions. We knew the feelings really well, but still the feelings were there and they were heavy. At the time, I was doing a lot of quilting. And so when she asked me, she's like, how does it feel when you go in your studio? Because I would go in my studio and I could be there for an hour and not do anything. I was so stuck. And she's like, describe it to me. How did it feel? I'm like, well, we told her the feeling. She goes, no, I mean, like, paint a picture. Describe it to me in descriptive words. And I was like, well, that's a new one. I hadn't heard that, that you know, doing that before. And, of course, since I was doing quilting, I... I Considered it a huge weight, like an invisible blanket that was on me. And she came up with this idea, and I thought it was like the biggest idea, and it sounds so simple. But it was, would it be okay if you move the blanket to the side a little bit just to let your arms out? Where you could still have that weight of the blanket. Maybe that's something that of comfort. You need to have that blanket on. And just let your hands come out for a little bit, and you can draw something and I'm like I can wrap my brain around that that sounded like possibilities that was something I could do I got excited and she is set up kind of like a therapist and she was set up for sessions it could go on as long as you wanted to I approached her with look I want to do four sessions and I want to be done with this excuse me <laughs> I want to be done with this because I want to move forward. Um, I knew I was the rock of the family. Um, I knew that the kids, my parents, my husband, they leaned on me heavy. And I had to get through it. And I had to give me something back in order to get through it. So this was my investment to myself. And it's worked. And every so often still. This was a few years ago. Every so often, I still have to go back to week one and do maybe a week two, and then I'm back on it again. So it can work. You can get through it, and hopefully this helps. Thanks. Hopefully those tips helped you out some. Um, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can get notified for any new videos. And if there's any topics you want me to cover or even about resin and, and the artist journey that I'm on. Feel free to leave comments down below and I'll see you later on. Bye.